Tree Fort Music Fest is almost here. The festival will take over downtown from March 20th to the 24th. Come discover hundreds of bands with me. I bet you'll find a bunch of new faves. Think of it as a real life playlist from your coolest friend. Five day passes start at $295, but it's not just about the music. From beer to comedy to food and tech, there's lots to explore. Check out the lineup and snag your ticket today at treefortmusicfest.com. Today on CityCast Boise, what makes a local coffee shop great? We're breaking down the key elements of this essential community space. Plus, we shout out our favorites in the Treasure Valley from third wave shops to old guard institutions. It's Wednesday, January 17th. I'm Nick Kwa, and this is what Boise's talking about. I'm a huge fan of coffee shops, you know, staple of any community, essential meeting places, uh, employer to masses, purveyor of good smells, all that kind of things. Uh, but before we dive into, uh, you know, sort of your coffee shop philosophy, let's call it, what is your order? Like, what's the what's your go-to when you show up to any spot? Blake, you want to go first? Yeah, okay. Oftentimes, I will go for just, like, kind of, a sen- like, straight essential staple oat milk latte. Oh! And often in the... Okay, they're, like, two months out of the year. And then, like, the dead of winter when I'll get it hot. But most of the time, I like it iced. And then maybe with some sort of flavor, if I know that the place that I'm going to needs the extra boost of flavor. Right. <laughs> because oftentimes oat milk lattes just are like dead and flat, but it's also like, it's a tried and true. Like it's it's a go-to, you know, I can trust it relatively consistently. Speaking as a person who like occasionally likes a gas station coffee, I could, I totally understand the uh, sweetener situation. Uh, Evelyn, like what's, okay, you seem like a, to me, I'm assuming you're a black coffee person. Am I right? Am I wrong? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I like have a huge sweet tooth. You just see really hardcore to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I keep it basic. We'll do a classic caramel latte or a classic vanilla latte, always iced. Mm-hmm. But during this time of year, if I am craving a hot drink, I will get a hot, dirty chai. Mm. I assume dirty chai is a chai with a shot of espresso in it. Yeah, two or three, two or three shots in there for me. Oh, that's too much energy for me. <laughs> that's a lot of caffeine. I actually know someone who's a cold brew person straight through the winter. And a uh, shout out to that guy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm here for that too. I love a classic cold brew. Absolutely. Um, so I, I personally like find coffee shops like essential pieces of any community. Like I, it's a place for me. It's a reason for me to leave my work table for a while. Um, I have not smoked for a long time, but I used to, you know, really treasure my smoke breaks. The walk to the coffee shop has really sort of taken that place for me. And, you know, that's kind of informing the way I think about the question of like, what makes a good coffee shop? You know, I'm curious, like, Evelyn, around where you are, what, what do you sort of look for in a coffee shop? I think for me, what makes a good coffee shop is it serves a bigger purpose of like bringing community together. This is a place where you want to bring your best friends, sit down, catch up. But it also is the place where you're like, okay, I need to go in here and I need to be productive and I need to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's what makes a good coffee shop is that I know I'm going to get a good drink here and maybe a good pastry here, hopefully. And I get to do what I need to do, whether it's like I'm with my besties or I need to get my work done. So workplace means living room meets common room. <laughs> I want it all. Yeah. Blake, what's your go-to spot? I guess the Flying M, which we've talked about many times on the podcast before. Uh, the Flying M in Boise, I've just been, you know, going there for years ever since I moved here. And so if I just some like quick, like put me on the spot of like, oh, I'm just going to go meet a friend for a coffee. I'm probably going to go to the Flying M just because I know, you know exactly what you're going to get. You know, it's going to be cheerful. I feel like oftentimes you can find other kind of like cooler coffee shops almost that are like trying to be cooler. Sure. But um, like Flying M is just tried and true. I love that you said Flying M because Nick, you asking me what makes a good coffee shop immediately. I think it's Flying M because you have one in Caldwell, you have one in Nampa, you have one in Boise. Hello, who else is doing that? Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I compare everyone to Flying M. And they're like, 
the most kind of adapted to their locales, to their communities. Like they feel very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think of Flying M as an institution, really. Like it's one of the first places that I, I sort of patron when I first started coming to Boise well before I moved here. For me, at least, it's always such a nice slice of like the young people community here, which is totally you know it's, it's kind of hard to see it visibly a little bit <laughs> in in various pockets of Boise. What's your sort of earliest memory of going to to Flying M? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> so in high school, me and my friends, you know, we were like, "What is there to do?" Is this in Caldwell? There wasn't one in Caldwell at the time yet, so we would spend our weekends, um, our Friday nights, going to the Flying M in Nampa. And we would get our little coffees, take our aesthetic Tumblr photos. <laughs> and then we noticed that they would like bring in live bands and start doing shows there. And so we would go and watch live music. And we, I remember we met some band and we we're like, oh, we're just so excited. Little high schoolers taking our photos. And that's awesome. From there on, yeah, Flying M just became a big part of our, our friend group. And yeah, I love it. Yeah, and the one in Nampa is a converted like garage, right? Is that the space? Yes, yes. Their space is everything. Oh, man, beautiful. Uh, Blake, do you have like do you have an earliest memory? <laughs> well, it's funny that you mentioned the one in Nampa because I went to the College of Idaho for a year, and so I lived in Caldwell. And at that time, I mean, the Caldwell Flying M was going to open like two years later, so I was still a ways out, and so. Yeah, it was like a big, like some weeknight, like everybody got together. I didn't have a car at the time. A bunch of my friends and I didn't have cars. And so we'd all kind of migrate into Nampa to do a bunch of homework at the Nampa Flying M. Classic, just like your. But I do remember going to the downtown Boise One at some point in high school. It was here for like a convention for something or other. <laughs> and for some reason, one of the places that I latched onto as a high schooler in Boise, because I think it's so public or just like public facing is Goldie's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which I have a family friend who makes fun of me for, I called it Gordy's for years. I don't know why. <laughs> I just called it Gordy's. I was just wrong. Another big institution. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But one day uh, it was just like closed for some reason. Uh, and so I just kind of like wandered around and... Um, yeah, went to the M. And I th so I think like sophomore, junior year of high school, I remember that. And just like being a little baby gay that wasn't out yet from like a farm town, I was just like, mm -hmm. this is so overstimulating, <laughs> but also great. Like, yeah, it was exciting. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Goldie's, I mean, it's fun that you link the two things together because like Goldie's, a diner, you know, has a coffee shop attached to it. But in my mind, when I sort of think about like the image of like Boise, like it's very much together. Totally. My wife is from Boise. She grew up here and the two places go hand in hand in many senses. Uh, I also think a lot about Dawson Taylor as like another sort of uh, long time like Boise institution. The one on 8th Street has gotten a revamp a couple of years ago. It looks beautiful now. It's, a, it's on my morning walk uh, down when I walked down to the co-working space. And that's sort of personally the the coffee shop that I end up patroning the most. But I have really warm memories of like the old Dawson Taylor when it's a little dark inside. <laughs> yeah, I've heard so many people, like my boyfriend, for example, actually like talks about it quite frequently of like, I can't believe they changed Dawson, which like a lot of people love it, I know. But I know that a lot of people also really miss that grunge, like the stickiness of it. Yeah. And, you know, when I'm thinking about the sort of quote unquote, like older guard of the coffee shops, I also think about Java, which there's one downtown. Totally. There's one on 13th Street. Is there is there any other Javas that I'm missing out here? Not here. But yeah, Java also very important to me because it's like the only kind of alternative coffee shop in Twin Falls. And so that was like the place that I grew up going to. So when I was working and living in Twin Falls, I lived right next to one of the Javas. And I actually had no idea that there was one in Boise. Um, but I spent a lot of time at the Java in Twin Falls. And so when I returned back to the Treasure Valley and I was like, oh, there's a Java here. And there was one in Sun Valley, too. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's where it originated. Yeah. Oh, it originated in Sun Valley. I did not know that. So Boise has been a growing city for a couple of years now. And there's like a really sort of flowering small business economy and coffee shop sort of called the coffee shop sector is a big part of that. And we've been seeing the rise of this sort of new wave <laughs> in my head, at least their new wave uh, sort of guard of coffee shops uh, popping up. I'm a huge fan of Push and Pour. I think they have multiple locations. They set it up in Garden City, if I'm not mistaken. And they have a spot in the sort of converted gas station up on a bench right now, which I really love spending time there. In your mind, do you, 
like what what does this sort of this new wave of coffee shop bring to Boise relative to you know the Flying M's the the Javas like it feels a little different it feels like there's something there's something happening here and like I'm wondering if you could sort of like sort of walk me through your your emotional relationship with with this new uh, guard of coffee shops yeah I I think of it as honestly it fills a lot of cups, a lot of cups that need to be filled in our community. See what you did there. <laughs> yeah. And so I think it's, I, I, I honestly think a lot of it is co-working space. I mm-hmm. think that, um, I mean, literally look around what, what places can you go and for under $10 get, you know, a place to work, a social interaction, like talk to a stranger, get some food. Because co- a cup of coffee is also rent to some extent. Yeah, yeah. And so feel like you're part of the community and Wi-Fi, you know, so like mm-hmm. it's literally coffee shops like that's it. And so I think that there's, you know, enough room in the market for lots of different takes on it. That said, I think that I personally prefer a lot of like the older old the old guard just because I I mean, I, I love to patron like some of the newer ones as well. It's it's interesting. I feel like push and pour. I can't actually decide which side of that they're on. They're kind of in between. I, I agree, but in my mind, I, I tend to class them as new <laughs> because they have the skater edge of yes. them, which makes me think old guard. So I think that a lot of it really does come down to we need this country just like needs third spaces. Could you quickly define like third space for me? Because that's such a really really important concept when talking about a coffee shop. It's a a literal space, physical space in your community that you can go to in which it's not your home and it's not your workplace and you, fingers crossed, don't have to pay to be there. Right. It's essentially not a business that you're patroning but it's just a a place where you can go to spend time with people. These days, most of the time we associate it with coffee shops but it should be a library, it should be a park, it should be a lot more spaces like this. Yes, absolutely. Library for sure and also I do think that parks but it's 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 often kind of frowned upon socially to like just walk up and talk to strangers in a park but I think that that's where dog parks come in and so I think that that's where Boise also really shines but yeah that's my understanding of a third space we need something like a like a ring finger system for people who are just down to chat yeah, honestly. Big fan of that concept in the general. Uh, Evelyn like how often do you work out of coffee shops? I actually try and schedule twice a week or once a week for sure. I love working at coffee shops and I try to switch it up. I'll work at Jack Henry's in Caldwell. I'll work at Flying M Caldwell, Flying M Nampa. And then if I am feeling adventurous and I want to make my way to Boise, I actually love working at form and function in Boise. Yeah, they have a wonderful workspace at the kind of the second floor and at the bottom area. And the views are quite nice. That's one thing I look for in a coffee shop when I'm like, I need to get work done. I feel like here in Boise in the Treasure Valley, we do have that luxury of being able to have coffee shops that have those bigger spaces. Like Flying M Nampa is ginormous. It's, it's so huge. hard to find a coffee shop that size in like a huge city. They're tiny. Everybody's bunched up next to each other. Yeah. Me personally, I don't like that. I like having my little space and being in a bigger setting. Um, and so to be able to find a coffee shop that is kind of expanded and I'm not sitting immediately close to someone. That's just my style, but respect to those people who like being right next to others. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean the thing I like about the Nampa Flying M is that it looks like a, it feels like a mess hall, right? It's it's huge. It feels like a cafeteria. Like there is this sort of like communion communion vibe almost. But I, I think there's a sense in which the design of the coffee shop does communicate whether it it like wants you to stay a little longer or like. So I'm thinking about the sort of downtown Dawson Taylor, for example. There is a long row table with plug points, and it suggests like, "Hey, set up work here," and it's totally fine. And it you know feels safe to do that. Where there are some sort of in between designs, like um, thinking about the districts, you know, multiple tables spread out across the, the sort of floor, and it's like it is for hanging out, but is it really for working? <laughs> and it feels like too in between for me to feel comfortable setting up shop there for too long. Let me sort of pose this question, Evelyn. Let's say you want to have a career change, you know, love your city cast, but let's say you want to open up a coffee shop. Like what is, what is the ideal Evelyn coffee shop here? Oh, that is such a good question. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to get so lucky and I'm going to find this space that is ginormous. And so it's easy to split (laughs) up because if you want to be productive, there is that section where it's like, this is designated to do those work meetings 
get your work done, be productive, do whatever you want. And then this area over here, if you want to feel social, if you want to do what, whatever you're doing, bring your friends, your family, go on a date. So like a couch area versus like a work space area. Yes. Yeah. So we'll sure, we'll be sure to have that there. We have our house made syrups. Hell yeah. Oh, that's a big thing for you. <laughs> that is a big plus. Local coffee shops who have their house made syrups. Amazing. I think those are like key factors for me. What is the music vibe of your of your ideal coffee shop here? Honestly, just a bunch of house music, chaotic house music <laughs> bumping in the coffee shop. Incredible, incredible. Blake, what's uh, what's your you know I you know you just got a million dollar grant from the city, open up the coffee empire of your dreams. What's the play? I think that what's likely to happen is that it slowly morphs from a coffee shop into a bakery. Ooh, <laughs> yes, please, I love it. That's pretty much what happens. Sort of a fluid business in that sense. Yes, yeah, and maybe there's a bookshop. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but I think that one, we have high ceilings, but it doesn't feel cold, and then the hallmark of it, which again, like if anybody just finds out this code, they're just going to like, I don't know, just be the most successful coffee shop is like, you just have to find people who are really good at it, who are really good at making coffee and just like pay them really well, get them everything that they need and then just get out of their way and it's going to be beautiful. And then that makes people want to show up and that makes people want to kind of contribute to that culture. So there's a bakery element. I personally don't know if in my dream coffee shop, there is a live music element. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. So uh, for example, Necker downtown has occasional like poetry readings or like live music that are set off events. They're after closing hours. You know, you have to know about it to go. I prefer that. Which is also cool because it like expands the use of the space, right? And that's pretty cool. Yeah, I prefer that. Although I do like in the community, I want to have options of like going to like a trivia night or, you know, something like that at a coffee shop. But that's not what I want in my my spot. Right. The just sort of nine to nine hours. Uh, let's let's keep it let's keep it straightforward here. That's the other thing, especially here in Boise, open late, which I know paying for staffing. Ugh. It's only playing M um, that I that I think does it. Uh, mm-hmm. At least here in Boise. Um, boy, I do love the late night coffee shops. I feel like I described a club for mine. <laughs> yeah, you did. Espresso martinis everywhere. House music. Yep. Listen, it's your it's your coffee shop. It's your coffee shop. Uh, you know, I, I love the, the notion of combination coffee shops, the uh, the sort of combination coffee shop uh, bookstore. You know, it's like it's kind of the perfect Pizza Hut Taco Bell situation. Absolutely. Uh, and this also reminds me of uh, Bikes and Beans up over at the bench. You know, it's a, it's a bike shop and a coffee shop in, in theory. Yeah, I, I also I love those those sort of hybrid spaces. And that would probably be what what I would do. Uh, a coffee shop and a um, let's let's think of something random here, like a hair salon, like a running store, like a running store. Let's go with that. I wish you the best of luck with, uh, with the creation of your of your coffee empires. Should you aspire to to become a small business owner in the future? Yeah, thanks. Uh, donors pull through. Let us know. That's all for today here on Citycast Boise. Tell your favorite barista about us. And be sure to subscribe to our free Hey Boise newsletter for more coffee shop happenings. We'll be back tomorrow with more local stories from around the city. See you then.